Kim Kelly, a commentator for leftist media group Vice Media, likewise called for throwing milkshakes at all conservative politicians 56. In an extreme example of liberal stupidity, unhinged anti-Trump protester Arnav Gupta died of burn injuries to 85% of his body several hours after he set himself on fire near the White House while under the influence of synthetic marijuana laced with PCP 5758. A large number of illegal migrants stormed the Charles de Gaulle airport in Paris, occupying a terminal and chanting, France does not belong to the French. 59. June 2019. Liberal fascists beat Vietnamese journalist Andy Ngo. The Huffington Post celebrated the racist attack 60. Amanda L. Kondratyev, a failed Democrat political candidate who lost an election for a House congressional seat for Florida's 1st District to Republican Matt Gates, was arrested and charged with battery after throwing a drink at Gates following a town hall meeting in Pensacola, picking up on the tactic of milkshaking recently originated by British leftists against their political enemies 61 Kondratyev pleaded guilty to the charges on August 1, 2019 and faced up to one year in prison for the assault 62 but instead received only a 15-day prison term on November 18, 2019-63. Antifa activist Ezra Benner was arrested on a charge of disorderly conduct after he unsuccessfully attempted to chain the doors to a classroom where a college Republicans event was being held at the University of Washington in Seattle, with the intent of locking the event's attendees inside the classroom 64. Left-wing actress Bette Midler suggested stabbing President Trump in a since-deleted tweet on Twitter 65. Stephen Ray Becky was arrested and faces felony charges of attempted homicide for intentionally running down an 11-year-old girl on an electric scooter. Becky, who is himself white and was under the influence of marijuana, Xanax, LSD, and psychedelic mushrooms at the time of the incident, admitted to running over the girl because her skin color was white 66-67. Former Arkansas Republican State Senator Linda Collins Smith was found murdered in her home 68 A friend of Collins Smith, Rebecca Lynn O'Donnell, was subsequently arrested and charged with Collins Smith's murder 69. Second Republican State Senator murdered in two days, this time Oklahoma Senator Jonathan Nichols 70. Black parolee Tamar Bishop was arrested in Virginia after brutally raping and assaulting a white woman in New York City and then fleeing claiming she deserved it because of slavery reparations 71 Bishop has been charged on two counts of predatory sexual assault, attempted murder, rape, two counts of assault, sexual abuse, assault, and on a hate crime charge for the incident. A Trump-hating waitress at a Chicago restaurant spat on Eric Trump at the restaurant 72 after her release from police custody, the waitress was subsequently placed on leave by the restaurant pending an investigation 73. New York Times op-ed calls for doxing of ICE border agents 74. Has been actor Michael McKean, who played dim-witted greaser Lenny Kosnowski on Laverne and Shirley, attempted to incite violence in a Twitter post by calling for House Republicans to throw urine at Matt Gates 75. The tweet by McKean drew the inevitable flood of criticism against him from other posters for his comments. Antifa fascists in an unprovoked attack, brutally beat Andy Ngo, a Vietnamese-American journalist for Quillette. NGO was hospitalized with a brain hemorrhage following the attack in Portland 76 he had previously criticized Antifa for its violence 77. NGO was first blinded in a milkshake attack. Police reported that quick drying cement, a caustic substance, had been mixed into milkshakes 78. Journalist wannabe Carlos Maza of Vox Media, an NBC subsidiary 79 had previously called for milkshaking of conservatives and Trump supporters 80 Mazza was responsible for the ad Pacalypse, a massive purge of conservative YouTube contributors by the site weeks earlier 81 and attempted to escalate his vendetta to shut down all online opposing opinions he did not like, which began as, and mainly focused on, an attempt at getting revenge against Steven Crowder for the latter's commenting on his YouTube show about the openly homosexual Mazza calling himself a gay wonk which happens to be Maz's Twitter handle, only to be fired by Vox in August 2019 after the site began to see Maza as a liability for his anti-Crowder vendetta and his childish behavior on his Twitter account. The editor of the Soros-funded Media Matters tweeted a joke about the milkshaking and violent attack on NGO 82. CNN's Chris Cuomo defended Antifa in August 2018, saying that, all punches are not equal morally. 83. The New York Times opinion writer Charlie Warzel blamed the victim 84. 
Alleged fact checker site Snopes attempted to excuse the violence 85. The LGBTQ plus centered human rights campaign press secretary called Andy Ngoa, sniveling weasel, and said the leftist attack was the greatest thing that could have happened. In Andy Ngo's own retelling of events, I was suddenly slammed on the back of my head with something hard. Dazed and still hearing faint chants of no hate, I was then punched and kicked by perhaps a dozen masked people in black. At an Antifa event meant to resist fascist violence, I a gay journalist of color was beaten so badly that I was hospitalized for a brain hemorrhage. 86. Portland progressive Mayor Ted Wheeler did nothing to stop the violent protests. 87. Senator Ted Cruz called on federal law enforcement to investigate Portland officials, including Wheeler himself, who ordered police to stand down as citizens were beaten. 88 89 90. In a break with precedent, CNN's Brian Stetler grudgingly reported the attack on NGO, a conservative journalist, by a violent left-wing mob 91. At a White House conference on authoritarian domination and censorship by big tech and social media, President Trump highlighted the case of Andy NGO and the negative effect unchecked leftist ideology has on society 92. At least two other people were reported injured in the Portland violence 93 only three Antifa activists were arrested 94 95 while police stood by and watched people being beaten 96 after attacking an elderly man, Antifa falsely blamed him for the attack rather than themselves 97. July 2019 Video capture of the Takeyama Antifa suicide bomber attack on an ICE facility housing children 98. Many Aoke Twitter accounted deleted due to death threats made by cowardly supporters of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez 99. Anti-Semitic arsonist Tristan Morgan was arrested and institutionalized after he accidentally set himself on fire attempting to burn down a synagogue in London 100. University of Florida student was allegedly attacked for wearing a mega hat 101. Gutless pro-abortion cowards made death threats and launched harassment campaigns against Canadian independent movie theater owners planning on screening the pro-life movie Unplanned 102. About 700 illegal migrants stormed Paris Pantheon Monument demanding amnesty 103. Facebook, in clear violation of its own terms of service, adopted rules explicitly allowing violent threats against people it deemed dangerous individuals. 104. UC Berkeley, No Whites Allowed Day, Full Video, dot 105. Antifa Fascists Assault Reporter at Free Speech Rally in Washington, D.C. 106. Antifa Black Shirts Threaten the Life of Republican Congressional Candidate Joey Saladino 107. Organized protests occur across the country to oppose court-ordered final deportation orders of 2,000 criminals. A mob in Denver attacked an ICE facility and replaced the American flag with a Mexican flag 108 Democrats refused to condemn this anti-American act 109 when confronted about their actions by the Daily Caller at the protest site. The leftist protesters showed their true colors as an unhinged female protester had an incoherent and emotional freakout and then proceeded to perform a vulgar pole dance on a street sign while a beta male protester, demonstrating his lack of intelligence, maturity, and debating skills, blurted F the troops, at the camera before the group fled the scene shortly afterward 110. Police arrested several protesters for aggravated assault outside the Phoenix ICE office 111. Antifa suicide bomber with an assault rifle firebombs ICE facility in Tacoma, Washington, the attacker was shot and killed by police 112 he burnt a car 113 and was attempting to ignite a large external propane tank. The attacker later was identified as having attended Antifa black shirt protests 114, 115, 116. The suicide bomber left behind a manifesto with a call to arms 117, 118, 119. Anti-ICE protesters and other left-wing activists praised the attacker for his violent actions 120, 121. Willem Van Spronsen, 69, sent a manifesto to friends the day before the assault in which he wrote, I am Antifa and was lionized as a martyr by Antifa on its Facebook and called on others to avenge his death. 122 Spronson appears to have been part of a May 5, 2019 episode of CNN's United Shades of America with W. Kamau Bell. The heavily promoted show featured Bell explaining the Redneck Revolt, which Bell identified as gun-toting liberals who defend the Second Amendment and seek to battle the alt-right and neo-Nazis. Bell called them good guys, 
going to a gun range with members and even questioning why more white people don't share their viewpoints 123.